So this, this was FedEx from the other side of the world. Even though I ordered it from the UK site. And inside we've got a mini sporum Neptune series HX80G. So this is the lowest spec one that they currently make. So everybody seems to be going mad for reviews on the 99G. Uh, the 90G is the Ryzen 9 version of the, this model basically. And the 99 is the the AM5 sort of version of it, the DDR5 version of the, the Ryzen 9. So this is a Ryzen 7 5800H. The Ryzen 9 version is a 5900H and really the only difference that I can see between the HX80G and the HX90G is that um, it comes with 200 megahertz more sort of clock speed and that's it. So about 200 megahertz more at the base speed and 200 megahertz more at the kind of boost. So I have a feeling this thing could be a bit of a bargain. So as we can see here, this is the HX80G 0 plus 0 UK. So what that means, I believe, is it's the UK version, so it comes with a UK lead and hopefully a UK power supply. And the 0 plus 0 means no memory, no storage. So I've got my own storage because I have the 2 terabyte NVMe drive that I did once have. And here we have a cat who's decided to check out the box. The 2 terabyte that we did once have in the 1X player, that's back to a 1 terabyte, so I'm going to use a 2 terabyte in here. And I picked up some low cost crucial memory. I did have some memory, but it was only going to be 8 gig if I was going to do that, so I decided to go 16. So what does it say here? It's Ryzen 7 5800H, we knew that. And um, Radeon 6600M mobile series uh, graphics, so it should be good. Zen 3, so my current PC is a Zen 2, so it's a little upgrade there. Uh, it's got all the usual AMD bump. Neptune series on this side of the box. Here's a bit more of the spec, there you go, so we can see where the 0.0, .0 is. So this is, a, as we see, it's an 8 core 16 thread machine. It's got 4 meg of L2 cache. 16 meg of L3 cache and it's a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz with a boost of 4.4. So I think the Ryzen 9 version, the, the 90G, is a... Uh, hello. And he's off. The base clock of that one is 3.4 I think and a boost of 4.6. I don't think that's going to make a huge amount of difference here. Graphics, as we said a minute ago, is the RX 6600M, which has got 8 gig of D GDDR6. It's uh, got no gigabytes of storage, which is fine, we're going to sort that, or memory, sorry, and no gigabytes of storage. And it should have an extra slot available, we'll use that at a later date, but not right now. So, wireless is, is included, so it's a 2230, we're not going to use that, this comes with a 2.5 gig network connection, so we're going to be using that straight onto my router, so we've got a decent network connection speed, and it could do two display ports. 2 HDMI and it's got one output jack uh, for uh, audio. So there you go, 2.5 gigabit RG45. So it does say it's a UK model as well. So I didn't pay any extra taxes, that was a concern of mine because it, it got held up in um, import. But strangely it was supposed to come tomorrow and it's came today, so that's always good. So I'm going to cut to opening this up. We'll get the everything in the package in and we'll start Sticking in the storage in the memory. And so here we have the unboxing. So here's the Minis Forum, Neptune Series HX80G. Now there's not many reviews for this online. I don't know why that is. So I guess most people, or most of the reviewers, were for the H HX90G, which is by and large the same machine. It's a Ryzen 9, although... The Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9 mobile series are basically the same processor but with a slight bump in process speed. There's no extra cores, so it's 8 cores, 16 threads. So let's uh, let's open this up. Now, I haven't actually opened this, just take the packaging off the outside, the plastic packaging. And inside we have a little warning sheet. Now, this is warning you about liquid metal and not opening up the side with the CPU cooler itself, which yeah, that makes sense, I'm not going to do that. You get a little... Um, Booklet, which um, tells you how to do your DIY of your DDR memory and what have you. Put that to one side. And here's the unit itself. It's a sensor plate 
firm foam packaging, so that's good news. And it's right at the top here, you can see the fans already. So we'll just lift this up and out, and we'll put it over to the side first, and we'll just see what else is in this box. So, hot cover, there's nothing else we need. Ah, now that's good news. So, comes with power brick, which is a, quite a beefy unit. It is a 262.2 watt, 19 volt, so quite beefy. It's got a four pin adapter on it. Comes with a UK branded cable, so that's good. And we also have an HDMI cable, it's always nice to get free, don't need that, but it's good to have. We have the, the bracket for the foot and the foot itself. Well, it's actually quite a weighty foot, it's got a bit of heft to that. Price for that. I thought it might have all been a bit lightweight. Now, we're not actually going to use that in my case. I'm going to be using this um, rather than upright, I'm going to be using it just lying flat. And what else have we got in the bottom here? So, this looks like heat spreaders for the memory, and heat spreaders well, that's for the memory, that's for the NVMe. So, that's actually very good. So, that, that rules out the next part of the purchase I've made. So, one thing I did have already in my possession was this so it's not super fast but this is the wrong box that's a half terabyte one but I have a two terabyte I think it's a Western Digital we'll open that up I just stored it in the same box as the small one that I had so this was used in my 1x player before and it failed I think that's the one there that is a Western Digital Blue but it's not a 500 gig one it's a two terabyte model in here I think I took out of my 1x player before I sent it back. So yep, Western Digital. Not a super flashy one. An SN570. Correct. So nothing too flashy, but it's two terabytes. That was the main thing. This machine will be a, a probably a work in progress. You know, when it when it does get upgraded, it'll get upgraded with slightly better parts, but it'll be perfectly acceptable for what we have just now. And oh, on the basis of that. I saved a few few bucks as well. It went for 16 gig of RAM. So my main PC has got 32 and it's totally wasted having 32. Uh, certainly for gaming at the moment. So I went for a 16 gig kit. It's crucial uh, by Micron, 3200 megahertz, CL22. It's just cheap stuff. This was the cheapest they had. I think it was about 24, 25 pounds. But it's crucial, so it should. It's got a good uh, warranty on it and it should be good enough for this little uh, build. And then the next thing you need is the memory stick of some sort, it's a 32 gig one. I'll put windows on this, the ISO, for building the machine. And I did also buy a pack of heat spreaders for the NVMe, just in case I didn't actually get any in the box, but we got that, so don't need that, that's fine. So, and finally, on to the main event, we have the packaging for this. So I'll take that off. I have to say, well, it's a mini PC and it isn't a small mini PC, but some of the reviewers make out that it's not it's not very small, but this is pretty small. I mean, this is considerably smaller than the original Xbox One, um, by a long margin. In fact, it's not much bigger than a Wii U. Now, here's the fake carbon fibre. I'm not sure if that's really particularly new. It's quite not too soft on the top. So this is the top half. You can see the fans just about through there. And um, yeah, what's that for input? Well, we know what it's got to be honest. It's got the power jack, it's got two display ports, two HDMI, two three point, I think it's three actual 3.1 ports for USB, two and a half gig RJ45, which is good. I'm going to be using that. And then on the front, a bit less IO up here, but there's still some. Got another USB 3.1, I think it might be, and a USB C and a power button. As well as some audio jacks and make, uh, microphone jack. So to open the thing up, you have to, just like the, the other models you see online, you have to peel off the bottom. It feels kind of wrong doing that on a brand new device, but it's what you have to do. Same on that side, to expose the two screws at each end, so you can pop the bottom panel off. And we'll just pause for a moment while I get a screwdriver to open that up. So I've got a ginormous screwdriver, but it's going to be just... Fine for this because it's actually got quite a small head and it fits perfectly. 
So we'll just take these off just now. We always have some place good to store your screws. And then the bottom just pops off, I believe. So you need to get round, oh, there's an edge there, look, I can see it. Oh no, that's actually for that bit there. So it just pops off. So I do actually have a pick, but I'll just try and um, work away around. We'll try and see if we can find this pick. I just need a little guitar pick, which I'd find a gap. Somewhere that I think will be not so obtrusive. The bottom here would be a good idea with the the stand is, so we'll just work our way into there somehow. Oh, I was almost in there. We're in. Oops, we were in. Yeah, we're bouncing up and down a bit here because the camera's on the same table as this. Quite easy to pop off, has to be said. Just find a little edge, it'll just pop in there. Mark its way around. at the front edge, but well, we'll get there in the end. There we go, just have to be gentle and take your time. There we go, I'm going to lay that down and just lift that cover right off. There we go, it's quite easy really. So we've got some screws to take out here, just to lift this panel off. So we've got a big massive screwdriver out again, I've got a smaller one here but these this fits perfectly so and um, it's good to see this thing's actually got a separate CMOS battery and it's easy to get to now I believe it's got a little CMOS reset button on the front just up here but even so if that doesn't work it's always good to be able to pull your CMOS battery at times so so it's quite a chungus heat, com heat pipe set up in this thing. It's four pipes for the uh, GPU and three pipes for the CPU. A massive cooler. Lift that off. It's quite a sturdy bit of metal it has to be said. Okay, put that there. And so your NVMe drive goes here. It screws in with the same screw as your Wi-Fi and your two memory slots here. So, what we'll do is we'll get the memory out first I think because that needs no tools. Place this here. And I think we'll, uh, we'll put these heat spreaders on because you know, it's quite a compact unit and there's not so much ventilation on the back so that'll be why they've included these heat spreaders. So. They're quite massive. So go quite far up presumably, yep. Yeah. Okay. That looks like a separate one for the another NVMe drive, so not two different types in fact, oh no, it's the same one, it's just that one's became a little bit uncovered. Okay. So it's got a little flap that you can peel off. And we'll line that up this way. Have the bare half sticking out the top. Let's see if I can get some nice and straight. Unlikely, but we'll try our best. 
Mm, pretty good actually. I'm gonna line it up. Well, I them up wrong. Nope, that's fine. Now, this is going to be flipped over that way, so that's not going to do. Well, it was open. So, the, the chips are on this side, the heat spreader is going to go on that side. But we'll put it on anyway because it's going to look nice. Okay, let's get that lined up. Oh dear, that came right off. If I could push down just to keep that stable. So that's 16 gig added that quick. That was pretty easy. So I'm going to use a smaller screwdriver for this. And it's the same screw, so I just need to be a little bit careful when I do this. Get this screw out. These are always tiny, these screws. Magpie screw always helps as well. Okay. Right, so in this little bag here, we have the one heat spreader, I think. Yeah, I think it is. Thermal pad and two little rubber bands. Okay, do a nice little thermal pad on there. Right, let's get this dry. key lined up right that's going to be fine so stick the thermal pad I think to the back of the heat spreader first I'll do it this way I think just for easiness I'll do this off camera because it'll be much easier I think it's a little better light there we have it just attach that carefully and then get ready to peel off the other side. There we go. Not really one for doing big exuberant peels. Okay, so we're going to bite these two together. And get over the chip at this end and the chip at that end. So, carefully line it up. Got a little bit overhang there, that's, that's a little bit nasty. I'm going to just, well, I've still got time, I'm going to just sort that. Off camera, and the heat pad, the actual um, pad's a little bit long, but I think that'll be okay. Feel super strong on there, yep. So, we're going to fit these little bands, these will hold it nice and tight. It's one band done. Well, that could have ended in disaster if that heat sink had fell off in use, although it's going to lie flat, but it's going to lie flat on the other side so okay so that's both the, the bands on now so a little bit straighter okay try that for a second time okay okay that's much better you see what I did there I like to go I probably didn't see because my hands in the way but I like to turn backwards before I turn forward, so I'll turn anti-clockwise before I turn clockwise, just to get it lined up properly. Okay, I'll we'll just lift this back in place. Pretty sure that's the way I picked it up, so that's exactly the way it's going to go back down. And we'll get the big screwdriver again, because these screw heads were larger. And really, what I'll do now, after I've reassembled this and put the feet back on, is I'll just cut to the point where I've installed windows because all you have to do is go to the windows site, tell it to build media, put your, your um, USB stick in, let it create a bootable media and then away you go, build your windows image. Now in my case, 2 terabit drive, I'm going to set about 200 gigabytes aside, I still like to go old school, so I'll be 200, 200 250 gigabytes set aside for OS and the rest will be for games. And that's just so that, I know um, NVMe drives don't suffer from the same issues as spinning disks, but cluttering up your C drive to the point of it being absolutely full can impact on performance, I still feel, so I'm not going to 
tempt fate with that. Now, two terabytes still doesn't seem that big. Uh, it's not. And I will probably put another drive in at some point. I've been told a four terabyte will work. But... Now that I purchased this, I can't really afford to buy another NVMe drive, so I've been trying to do this on a serious budget. And so, what I'll do just looking to make sure I've actually screwed that in the right place because where are these screws going to bite into? It's all those two bits there. Is this correct? Ah, yes, it is. There's your diagonals. Right, let's make sure I've got the front. Here's the front. Because this is a fixed piece, so it's obviously not that way across, because that's not going to work, so it must be into where the bottom is. Well, that's the front, actually, so is this the front? Yes, the front is here. Yep, that's correct. So, because I can't afford a lot of storage, NVMe storage and solid-state storage, I know um, solid-state drives are a little bit cheaper just now, but still can't afford a large capacity one. I just so happen to have an Amazon Basics somewhere. Five terabyte, reasonably quick, spinning rust disk. So that'll be okay for what I'm gonna install on it. So what I'll probably have on there is a lot of emulated stuff. So I'll probably put on um, the Wii U ROMs that I'm gonna rip from my current Wii U. And um, We'll see how games run from that, to be honest. They might well be okay. I know there will be a few frames lost, but it's just, just what I can afford right now. So these are tight, but I'm not doing them very tight, just a little bit more finger tight. And then we put these back on, line them up with the feet, so it's good that this is the... It's good that it's got these little rubber feet, so it'll protect the underside. Shame there's no spare feet with the... Um, the unit, but this should still be okay. Okay, that's us. Now populated, ready to rock. So this little bad boy is going to be mounted under my TV cabinet, facing that way. So it should be quite stealthy, just the light for the uh, power light will be showing. Probably won't have to use these very often, maybe they'll be used for charging controllers. But uh, and one of the ones in the back I've used for the hard drive. I have to make sure I don't put anything on top because I have a bad habit for like my Xbox and that where it's not vented on top. That's where I put the hard drive. Right, um, this I'll just put behind and we'll cut to some action of it actually in use and how we're going to use this going forward. <laughs> 